This is Mike Wallace with another television portrait in our gallery of colorful people. The story you're about to hear has all the elements of an adventure novel. Suspense, danger, and a main character who changed his identity and was born into another world. The story, however, is true. The man, John Howard Griffin, music scholar, Texas farmer, journalist. He darkened his white skin by medication, and he crossed the color line to live as a Negro in the Deep South. And so John Howard Griffin is remembered, when he is remembered at all. But there is much more to Griffin's life than his controversial journey disguised as a black man. Nevertheless, it's a good place to start. The transformation was total and shocking. I was imprisoned in the flesh of a total stranger, an unsympathetic one with whom I felt no kinship. All traces of the John Griffin I had been were wiped from existence. I looked into the mirror and saw nothing of the white John Griffin's past. I had gone too far. I was a newly created Negro who must go out that door and live in a world unfamiliar to me. I had tampered with the mystery of existence, and I had lost the sense of my own being. This is what devastated me. The Griffin that was had become invisible. The worst of it was that I could feel no companionship with this new person. I did not like the way he looked. But the thing was done and there was no possibility of turning back. For a few weeks, I must be this aging Negro. I must walk through a land hostile to my color, hostile to my skin. In early November of 1959, John Howard Griffin embarked on a journey into the unknown. Venturing into foreign terrain was something he had done often in his life, but rarely had the stakes been as high. Griffin, a white Texan, planned to travel disguised as a black man describing life in the harshly segregated American South. He was on assignment for a magazine, but Griffin was looking for far more than a good story. Stepping into that New Orleans night, Griffin was continuing a lifelong search. What kind of person would want to change the color of his skin? Well, he always was different. I was born in Texas in 1920. We were, for the most part, what you would call a middle-class family. My mother was a homemaker and a piano teacher. My father was a wholesale grocer and a pretty good Irish tenor. My dream was to be a composer on the days I wasn't aspiring to a life in science. My most prized possession was a collection of the Harvard classics my grandfather gave me. Ideas, great ideas. This is what mattered. The Fort Worth of John Howard Griffin's youth was a town not unlike many others in America. Its prosperity relied on a growing influx of immigrant laborers. Yet alarm about immigration and perceived changes in the American way of life led to a resurgence of the Ku Klux Klan, both in Fort Worth and nationwide. The Klan espoused white Protestant supremacy and attracted a following that reached a high of six million members by 1924. One Klansman visiting Fort Worth in 1922 congratulated the local chapter noting that 90% of the city's preachers, your leading lawyers, and your social leaders are loyal Klansmen. Fort Worth's attitude toward race mirrored that of the South in general. 
Discrimination and segregation was quite simply the way of life. This routine was broken frequently by incidents of shocking brutality. One lynching that took place not far from Griffin's home drew national attention. The victim, Jesse Washington, was drugged from his cell, burned, and then hung before 25,000 onlookers. Though the murder happened four years before his birth, Griffin remembers it and other lynchings being a frequent topic of conversation during his youth. <laughs> 